This is the new BMW 5 Series, and you can think of it as being the sweet spot in the BMW saloon car range. So the 3 Series, that's a bit like the iPad Mini. You know, it's pretty good, but for some people it's going to be too small. Whereas the 7 Series, that's a bit like the iPad Pro, and, well, they're like carrying a tray around. A bit silly, really. Whereas this 5 Series, it's like the original iPad. It's powerful enough, and it's big enough and it is reasonably affordable. So it starts from around £36,000. And if you click up there to go to carwire.co.uk, you can pay it off from dealers and buy at a price you're confident in. And really, this car is going to be big enough for almost everyone. The first thing to note is that the doors open nice and wide, making it very easy to clamber into the back. And once you're here, I mean, look at this. Got loads of room. You've got a question why anyone would actually need a 7 Series knee room. Look, I can do three fists between my knees and the seat in front. That's in my usual driving position. Headroom, that's really good as well. People over six foot will be fine back here. As for sitting three abreast in the back, well, this seat is raised up a bit and this hump in the floor is massive. So it's not ideal for the person in the middle seat. But the car is quite wide, so the people in the outer seats will be fine. And then there's the other elements of practicality. So look, we've got airplane style folders there. So I can put my iPad away there. And cubbies throughout the car are really generous. I can fit a big bottle in this rear door bin. There's some more storage here. Look, little cup holders, they pop out. And you can pay a bit extra and get the car with three-way folding rear seats. That brings us on to the boot. Now, rather interestingly, the capacity is slightly more than that of the larger 7 Series, which just seems a bit bizarre, but there you go. And it is, it's a really nice, useful size. The lip isn't too large to lift stuff over either, and the opening is nice and wide. You've also got some useful storage areas about the place. However, the overall capacity is still 10 litres less than on the Mercedes E-Class. Is that going to bother you? Who knows? Now, if you click up there, you can watch my in-depth practicality video, see how much stuff we could squeeze in this car's boot, how easy it is to fit a child seat in the back, and what it's like with three adults in the rear seats. Now, I mentioned the Mercedes E-Class. In terms of the design, I don't think this 5 Series quite stands out as much. It doesn't have the elegance of the Mercedes, but it's still a nice looking thing. And on the inside, I have to say, BMW's designers have done a fantastic job. It is classy without being overly showy, and it's all very easy to use. Plus, I like the seating position, I mean, it's just spot on. You can rest your elbow there and there and just cruise around for hours on end, totally comfortable. I can't fault the quality either. Just looking everywhere, looking around, trying to find cheap bits of plastic. I can't find any, none at all. This feels expensive inside and it's actually well equipped as well. So as standard, you get the big full on professional Navi system. You get digital driver's display, and this brings me on to the new iDrive. So they've updated it so you can control it in the usual way using the swivel wheel. You can press a button here and talk to the car and it even understands a brummy accent. You can use it as a touch screen as well if you want to. Just go back and there's gesture control so I can wave my finger around to do things like increase the volume. Though it's a bit temperamental that and yeah, I think it's a bit of a gimmick. But if you want to see more detail on this infotainment system, click it there to watch my detailed review of it. It's really impressive. That's the sensible stuff dealt with, now for some fun. And the 5 Series rear drive setup helps with this. BMW lets you turn the stability control off all the way, which allows you to act like a hooligan in your diesel powered executive saloon. It's a very, very important buying criteria that, not. While you'd never actually turn the stability control off, especially not on the road, my tomfoolery does illustrate how well balanced and predictable the 5 Series is. And for those wanting maximum grip, it's also available with all wheel drive. But there's more you need to know. This BMW 5 Series is larger than the old version, yet somehow it manages to be up to 100 kilograms lighter. In fact, it's the lightest car in its class, and that helps the handling. It feels, well, not like a sports car, but it's certainly agile enough, and if you want to have some fun, you can do. The steering's responsive, though it doesn't really have much in the way of feel, but that doesn't really matter to anyone other than motoring journalists. Now, you might be thinking there's a trade-off in comfort, but no, actually, there's not at all. Well, there's not, so long as you fit the optional adaptive dampers. Now, they'll cost you around £1,000, but they are well worth it, because they make this car ride absolutely brilliantly. Without them, it's all right, 
It's just that over imperfection in the road, you do feel it kind of fidget around a bit. It's worse if you have the M Sport suspension because that's lowered. It's also worse if you have the bigger wheels with run flat tires. Now those options also affect the amount of tire roar you get. So keep with the smaller rims and the normal tires because then this car is super quiet for cruising around. Not too much road noise and hardly any wind noise. It's very, very relaxing. As for the engines, well, most people will go for the one in this car. It's the two litre diesel. It's not quite as smooth or as powerful as that that you get in the Mercedes E-Class, but it's, it's easily good enough. It's supposed to do 68 miles per gallon, though I'm only getting 43. It's, it's, it's all right. One problem I do have with this engine is that it can be a little bit rattly when you rev it. In terms of other engines, you can get a three litre diesel, which is smoother and quieter, or if you, know, you don't want that diesel rattle, go for one of the petrols, one of the three litre turbo petrols. The one in the 540i is rapid. Now all cars get an automatic gearbox as standard. It's got eight speeds and it's brilliant. It slushes the gears together when you want it to, and when you put your foot down, it responds pretty blooming quickly. You can also change the driving modes as well between Sport, Comfort and Eco and if you've got those adaptive dampers it'll also slacken off the suspension as well as altering things like the steering weight and the throttle response. As for the visibility, well it might be a big car but it actually feels smaller than it is and that makes it easier to navigate around town and there's not too many blind spots apart from one. That is quite a bit of a blind spot there, that huge area. Now if you want to see for yourself you can click up there to join me for a 360 degree passenger ride video in this car. So far then, the new Fire Series is really impressive. However, there are a few annoying things about it. Here's five. The light seats look great, but if you wear jeans, you'll be forever cleaning them. The BMW Digital Key may seem high tech until you try and use it, and it's as laggy and slow as some old BlackBerry mobile phone. I really like the digital dials, but why did BMW feel the need to fit these plasticky surrounds? They just look ridiculous when you've got the display off. There's no underfloor storage like you get on a Mercedes E-Class or Audi A6. No, no, you definitely can't lift that up. When it's sunny, you can get annoying flickery reflections in this silver bit of trim. It's enough to give you a migraine. Thankfully, this BMW has plenty of cool features, which more than make up for all this. To help boost aerodynamics and improve fuel efficiency, the grille remains shut until the engine needs cooling and then it opens. With a BMW mobile phone app, you can actually control the car over the internet from miles away and do things like lock it remotely. That's great fun for pranking anyone you lend the car to. You can get the car with soft closed doors so you don't even have to close them properly. The car will do it for you. There we go. It's like a posh kitchen cupboard. The car uses its sat nav to tell when it's about to approach a corner and will change gear accordingly. It'll also let you know when you're approaching a junction so you can back off the throttle to help preserve fuel. You can park the car in tight spaces by remote control using the key. Unfortunately, this particular car doesn't have that option, but it doesn't matter. I've got staff. Nah, we can stay in there all day. Now, if you click up there, you can go to carwire.co.uk for more information and to save an average of £3,300 on a new BMW 5 Series. So then, what's my verdict on this car? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should just go right ahead and buy the new 5 Series. This is the best car BMW makes. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and click up there on our logo to subscribe to our channel, down there to watch my 360 degree passenger ride video, down there to watch my in-depth practicality video and up there for my in-depth infotainment video. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in this review? It was the box set of the wire in the car's boot cubby. Why? because that is five series. Okay, so the joke doesn't work if you're American because you'd call that five seasons, but the language is called English, okay? English. <laughs>